I think you've got a handle on our little deal. Any problems? I turn you in. I'll send your picture to all my friends in the media and every a-hole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it. Your real name. All right, we're checking out Night Call here today. This is one I've been looking forward to for a bit now, just because you guys know me, I'm a sucker for a really intriguing art style of direction in games. If a game looks slightly intriguing visually, I will check it out. I'm not talking like realistic, I'm just talking like a very unique art style. And while this game has a noir art style, and you're thinking, what noir isn't really too unique, Falcon? It's done a lot, you're right. But in video games, something about it just kind of draws me to it. Secondly, you're playing the role of a taxi driver, an everyday type of dude here in Paris when you are apparently assaulted by a serial killer and you somehow survive the attack. And it's up to you within seven days to figure out who this is, but you're supposed to keep your doing your day-to-day -day duties as a, or at least night-to-night -night duties, night call, hence the name, as a taxi driver, earning money, picking up fares, but through your passengers learning maybe some valuable information to figure out who the serial killer is. Mm-hmm. Right, I wasn't talking through that, just so you could get the entire ambiance of the entire thing, the atmosphere. Hear? Sir? Can hear me? Or do I need to speak up? What the hell happened? I I, I don't see the options. <laughs> Is this intended or what? Sir, can you hear? I... Can you speak up? Is that, is, is that a speak up right there? Is this okay with you? Is my voice loud enough? Oh, it, it, it appeared near now. Is that intended to happen or what? Is that supposed to like emulate the idea that I'm over here waking up so I couldn't really understand what you were saying so the text was off to the side? If so, that's actually fairly intriguing. Is this okay with you? Yeah, yeah, I guess I can hear you fine now. She takes a deep breath. Oh, we have a, a female, all right. Try to feminine my voice up a little bit here. Sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. The word bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma? The word scratches along your throat. Yes, you were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head. Victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently in a loose in Paris. You feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. The judge, as the police call the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver, and in most circumstances, it would have been fatal. It touched my liver? I don't want bullets touching my liver. We chose to put you in an induced... Her voice becomes more distant. Fades. You taste bile at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in one ear. Your fingers move to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It's incredibly painful. The day... I'm sorry? The day... Catch... The judge? No. Okay. What? I, I don't understand why you go over there. Okay, so, on the email I got, this comes out on the 17th, they told me there were a couple of issues still on the way to release that they're working on. Maybe this is one of them right here. I'm imagining that's his passenger. <laughs> he was dead before you even got out of your cab. Okay, so I was asking about the pet. The doctor is silent for a second, a very awkward second she hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. A noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care. He's only the, he's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong, a, a Dorian type. You can't clearly make up what you say. A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain, not fatigue. Some odd combination of the two. Before being in this hospital room, 
You never realized that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger. A feeling you know all too well. Days go by, and a month later. We have 327 here in terms of cash. We got full tank. There are bigger pictures and smaller ones, so I imagine that's probably more important. I'm going to go towards this big boy over here. And just see what happens. <laughs> supposed to guess where they're going to. You can't just tell me. Who is this guy? We have Irv Grailu. The door opens as Irv, a homeless man like hundreds of others in Paris. You've known each other for years, and every now and then he asks a favor for you to drive him someplace. As usual, he greets you quietly, though he always seems a little on edge. <laughs> hey, buddy. What's up, pup? He has a strange verbal tick that you never really understood. You start the cab. You look in the rearview mirror and you realize that the homeless man is clutching his left side. Well, uh, all right already, Freddy. Is everything all right? He gives you a vague answer. Yeah, sure, fine. A pause. He can't help making a face. Let's insist. You're really not looking that great. Hey, don't worry, don't worry. I got in a little fight last night with this guy. Uh, but that's all taken care of. All taken care of. He smiles, revealing a row of bad teeth. Oh no, don't do this to me now, dude. I don't know what he's holding there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume the worst and he's holding the head of the man in that bag. And you're, you're, you're... Can I... Oh man, the options are... <sighs> I apologize for this, guys. I wasn't expecting... I haven't played the game before and I'm coming in here blind. I got the code here today. Let's go with that one. Hopefully that's a continuation of the questioning. Your passenger straightens up immediately. No, no way. I don't even know what I asked you. I wish I would have known. I'm never setting foot in that hospital again. Maybe I told him to go back to the <laughs> psychiatric ward. I don't know. <laughs> Either they don't want to treat you because you stink, but that at least I get. Oh, they pack you off to a social worker. His smell twists into a funny pucker, as if he were about to spit. They mean well and all. I just want to be left alone. He gives you a tap on the shoulder. He reaches for the door and stops short, overcome with a spasm of pain. Ugh, crap. You okay? Uh, yeah, don't wor worry. Take you to the hospital, take care. See you next time, say nothing. <laughs> I gotta continue making some fares here, buddy. I can't be chauffeuring you the entire night. He opens the door and climbs gingerly out. You should turn up the heat in your car, yeah? We freeze our asses off. Next thing you know, he's disappeared down a dark side street. You sigh, start the cab. Well, that was, uh... That was a very profitable trip for me. Good evening. Plain Saint Denis, please. He stopped short, visibly sizing you up. Do you know where it is? You nod yes. Avenue, the Magazine General. So, you know the street? Yeah, sure. He looks at you intently. You know all the streets of Paris? His question drips with disbelief. You know his kind well. The sword who referred you as the Arab, and not bad an eyelid. Well, you know, I would have liked to have chosen something popular, but, um... Let's just say we, we maybe said we oui, we oui, monsieur. I see mon, a sieur. We oui, monsieur, maybe. He seems hesitant. Well then, let's go. Okay then, you figured out who I am. His remark and his accent bring you back to the present. Sorry? You've recognized me, right? So you can make fun of me now. Make fun of you? He shrugs. Yeah, like all those other people do out there. And on that there, Tweety thing. Tweety. Makes, takes you a second to realize he's talking about social media. <laughs> I'm sorry, what a happy, we got a question, I don't know what you mean by that, make fun of you. Make fun of you? That's apparently leading maybe to some sort of um, argument, you know what? I'm down for a little bit of argument here. The show was aired like a month ago. At first things were fine, 
Friends called, we had a good laugh and all. And then I found out the internet is laughing at me too. There are those... those things, I can't remember what they're called. Moms? Mems? Memes? <laughs> I think he's talking, I think my boy's talking about memes right now. You know, those pictures that move all by themselves on the damn internet. Oh, they're, they're called GIFs. Or some people like to say, GIFs. So I made myself a Twitty account to go and see what they're saying about me. Calling me a virgin and a Nazi that I screw my cows to. He looks away as if someone else had spoken the words. Yeah, that's, that's essentially the internet for you, buddy. You can't take it see a person, though. You just can't. If you do, that's where you lose. They practically die laughing. A farmer who... He doesn't want to finish the sentence. Yeah, I think I know where you're going with that one. I'm on my way to see those TV jokers right now. Six months ago, they said they... W if there was any problem whatsoever, they'd take care of it. Well, there is a problem. His anger has subsided somewhat. His face is returning to its normal color. Uh, I'm not sure the TV executives can help you with the internet. <laughs> That's a beast of itself. The passenger pays the fare and exits the cab. You watch him for a minute, and he starts his vigil in front of the gates. You notice a newspaper on the back seat. Your last passenger must have left it behind. Or the one before. You grab it and put it away. Could come in handy. Then you set the cab. It's back to the grind. Okay, so we made some money this time. We got no tip. I imagine maybe the tip is based on how you interact with them. Probably get the right uh, things to reply to them. Which would have been probably... A lot easier said than done, if I could have the options on the screen at all times. The door suddenly opens and a woman gets into the back seat. Having a good night. For a second you freeze. It's one of the cops working in the judge's case. She grins at you. Her voice creaks. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks, I've been saying to myself, there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, molded over, bugged all my fellow cops about it because I was sure you liked it. She has a cold sneer on her face. I'm gonna be frank with you. She leans over to you. I don't think you're the judge. Nah, I just can't picture it. She squints. Like she's trying to make you out from a far away. Like you'd have gone to the extent of hurting yourself. Yeah, between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, he talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I'd think he had a crush on you. She smirks. No, no, I think he's more interested in your profile. In prison at 17. An icy chill fills your gut. And for murder, too. You open your mouth, but nothing comes out. Since you got out, you've kept a low profile. But you're lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's normal, you'd say. If they get word of your time served, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car, meaning no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost warm. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. She leans forward, her shining cat-like eyes narrowing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name, with evidence. Actually knowing him, he's not so hot on evidence. So, I'll give you info. Victims, suspect medical reports, some photos that are a bit... She makes a gagging noise. You have to be discreet. Keep it between you and me. Interrogate, ask questions, dig around. And this is where it all starts off. All right, so, okay, now it all kind of comes together. Again, would have been nice. I didn't... I'm not a cop, maybe? I've never done this. Say nothing. I'll say nothing. 
I'm not asking you to make an arrest and deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in the front of the station, okay? You're no Batman. You're just here to get me more information. She rummages around in her pockets for what seems like forever. Here, take my card. I'll call you in three, four days just to check in. We'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She takes on a dictatic, paternalistic tone like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught, don't get arrested. Also, I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like, and I know who your friends are. You can either be the solution or the problem, my friend. She takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to, I'll go check in on you know who. Her smile is biting. That reminds me. She know you've done time? You shake your head. She snickers. Oh, my little dirtbag. You cover your tracks well. She acknowledges your silence with a nod. Okay. I think you've got a handle on our little deal. Any problems? I turn you in. I'll send your picture to all my friends in the media and every a-hole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it. Your real name. Anyone close to you will have their places searched. They'll be put under house arrest, spend nights in jail. You have any idea how tense things are with that trial underway? You sigh. You know just what she's trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last names are almost the same. You could be brothers, actually. Oh, come on. I can't even choose. I only have one option here, which is that one. I don't even know what it is. She smiles. Let me tell you, with that face of yours and your handle, they'll welcome you with open arms. She takes on a serious tone, businesslike. I want to catch this killer personally. I want to drag him to court, ruin his freaking life with a bang. I can't botch this case, you got me? And neither can you, right? He ripped open your gut. You saw your own insides. You were in a coma. Yeah. You have plenty of reason to want to get him back. She furrows her brow. Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to all the rumors, and you come up with a list of suspects. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. All right, and don't get fired. Without this cab, you're worth nothing to me. All right, and this is where it starts off, huh? I have autopsy reports and everything. Two clues discovered. I guess we're just going through them and then all the information will be placed in there. Perfect. Well, it's a bit of a slow burn to start off with, obviously, but uh, we're finally at the part of Detective where it starts off. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, apologies for the weird issues we were having here. It's, uh, you know, the game's still being tweaked on until they're releasing the 17. So if you'd like to see a bit more, let me know in the comments. If you're leaving a thumbs up, you can definitely come back and check it out. Otherwise, all the information will be down below for Nightcall. I will catch you next time.